I really don't care about jokes. And because I'm a normal person, I care more about women's safety. There have been a lot of excesses with the trans movement. It's mm. done a lot of things incorrectly. And the idea that trans safety should always trump women's safety, mm. I just don't understand that. Blair White is the future of the trans community. What's up, everybody? Ty Rivera here, the absolute best LGBTQ comedian in the world. Before I go any further, I'm just going to ask that you like, comment, and subscribe. If you want to comment just to help me on the algorithm, but you don't know what to comment, just put a knife because you know trans activists are going to come from my neck. All right, you guys. So I wanted to talk about this because today Blair White was on Piers Morgan. Blair White, host of the Blair White Project podcast. And they were talking about a couple of different LGBT and sometimes trans specific topics. The way that they started it off was talking about J.K. Rowling. Daniel Radcliffe slams J.K. Rowling again over her stance on women's rights. She's being called transphobic once again by Daniel Radcliffe, who is a kid who played, well, now I guess he's a grown man, that played Harry Potter. And I've always struggled to figure out why it is J.K. Rowling is considered to be transphobic. And I've done a fair amount of research, but I never see anything that looks like true transphobia to me. But one of the reasons I brought up J.K. Rowling and the reason that Daniel Radcliffe was coming down on her in the press was because NHS, the National Health Service in the UK, has put out some new guidelines where trans men should not be housed on single sex male wards. Transgender people whose gender identity differs from their biological sex may be provided single rooms where appropriate. Patients will have the right to request a person of the same biological sex delivers any intimate care. Phrases like chest feeding will be banned. Also going further and banning puberty blockers, which America has yet to do. And they're doing a lot more to protect women's rights. And J.K. Rowling has been one of the people spearheading that. And I was glad to see that Blair White was on this panel because I think Blair White does so much to help the LGBT emphasis on the T community because she's so level headed. She's so well thought out. She's so good at speaking. And she's also so good at just accepting her reality, which is, I think, where a a lot of trans activists fall short. They all want to live in this land of make-believe. And so when they brought up specifically trans women in women's prisons, that's where I think you really got a sense of just how ridiculous the allies are because there's an ally slash gay man on the show named James Barr that I've seen on the show before. And he's always speaking on behalf of LGBT people in general. And when there's not a trans person there, he's there speaking for trans trans people. And to vilify trans people is just disgusting. Which really does bother me because this guy does not represent most of the gay people that I know. So even if we're just talking like a one-to-one -one comparison, he's a gay man and I'm a gay man, he doesn't speak for us, but he always feels like he's going to be the voice of reason and tell everybody the way that they're supposed to behave. And I understand why Piers Morgan has him on the show because he's probably good for ratings because people constantly don't dunk on him. You've literally said nothing there. That's That was Thanks, a giant Esther. nothing burger. Thank you. But they dunk on him because he doesn't usually know what he's talking about. So when they start talking about women's prisons, he was not willing to admit that trans women, biological males, should not be housed with female prisoners. Do you think trans people should be put into women's prisons? I think that yes they no? should be safe. Yes, as no. should all prisoners. Oh, what's the question? That's, That's not my an answer, answer though. I'm not going to get dragged into it. I'm not getting dragged into it. And Blair White was quick to point out... Biological men should not be in women's prisons. We have enough incidents here in the U.S. of women getting pregnant, getting because at the end of the day, in a lot of states in the U.S., you don't even have to have reassignment surgery to be in a woman's prison. It's just on your state, though. Not only does this damage women and children, mm -hmm. it's also come and it's rebounded and it's damaged trans people. And it's yes. made people look at the community like, what in the world is going on? And so that's one of the things that J.K. Rowling has been really raked over the coals for, was being very firm on that position. So then I looked into that and I ended up coming across a couple articles that really lay out what she was saying during that. And again, it's not transphobia. And so there was another guest on the show by the name of Officer Tatum that at a point was like, You won't be honest and tell the truth about the fact that it's absolutely mind-blowingly ridiculous to think that a man with a penis that's impersonating a woman or think he's a woman can be in a women's prison. That's insane. But this is you where seem the to, You is. seem to think, it's no disagreement, brother. 
The man has a penis. It's and he's a woman. In a... And that's where I really do agree with both Blair and Officer Tatum. We need to be logical, reasonable, and operate in facts. I'm it is a man that identify as a woman. It's not a woman. It's, it's very simple. Why can't we get that correct? And some people might get mad at me for saying this, but I think once you do something that means you have to go to prison, I don't think you should be afforded the luxury of how you identify being a thing anymore. You now identify as prisoner number, whatever your number is, and you belong to the male or female penitentiary of that particular state. And I know that might sound harsh, but that's really the way I see it. I don't think we should have to go out of our way to tiptoe around your feelings at that point. Now, when it comes to safety, I do agree that LGBT people, trans specifically, should be afforded a certain amount of safety within the prison system. But if that means that they have to be put in special population or some sort of solitary, to me, that would make more sense. Or like Blair had suggested at a point. As the only trans person on this panel, what do you feel about what, uh, what Officer Tatum just said there? I 100% agree. And I don't know exactly what goes on overseas in prisons. I'm an American, but what I do know here is just about once a month, there's some kind of story about a female inmate in a, f a federal prison being becoming pregnant, being raped, because at the end of the day, these are biological males with the capability mm. to impregnate women, to rape women. And the idea that trans safety should always trump women's safety, mm. I just don't understand that. And the other problem with people like this is they never offer any solutions. So for me- never. There are such things as LGBT wards in certain prisons in America. And for me, that's a very easy solution that's to this a great problem. Solution. Put trans people in LGBT wards, that makes the trans person safe and it also keeps women safe. Those have been a thing in certain prisons. And I know that in jail, that's definitely a thing where they, well, at least in LA anyway, where they ask you if you're gay, straight or bi. And if you identify as part of the community, you get housed with a separate group of people that are also LGBT so that you don't end up in danger with general population. And also when we're talking about female prisons specifically, in a lot of cases, what we're talking about is the safety of real women versus the comfort of trans women. Because it may make you feel better to be in a women's prison because you identify as trans. But if you're a genetic female, you have no choice but to be in the women's prison. There was also a lady by the name of Esther that was on the show and she had some things to say about how a lot of times people like the ally James start speaking for women and on behalf of women and really they shouldn't because I hate to break it to you but you're not a woman and that is very valid we can't say that women's opinions matter and that we actually care about women and women's rights but then as soon as a woman says something that's considered transphobic suddenly her voice is no longer valid which is very similar to what they do with LGBT people like me, LGBT people like Blair, LGBT people like Buck Angel, LGBT people like Marcus Deeb. Because we don't think like the sheep have told us we're supposed to think, suddenly our opinions aren't valid. And it's like, okay, well, if we're still a part of the community and we're honestly not saying anything hateful, we're just talking about facts and we're based in reality, then why is it our voices shouldn't be heard and in some cases should should be suppressed. I think my issue with this this conversation is that it feels like a, a smokescreen for transphobia. I don't think that anything that anybody said was unreasonable outside of the activists, which further supports my theory that usually when you get called transphobic, it's just because you didn't agree with something that a trans activist said. And I also can't help but feel that if trans women want to be respected as women, then they have to stop fighting with biological women. They have to actually take biological women's concerns into account because while you may choose to identify as a trans woman or as a woman, there are women that are born women and have no choice but to be women. It is what they are. So while trans may be to some people debatable, the way that we are born is the way that we are born and it shouldn't be an unsafe space. And the reason I say that Blair White is the future of the trans community is because having had trans friends for as long as I've had 
them. I can tell you for a fact, most trans people's thinking is closer to Blair White's thinking than the activists that you see speaking for trans people all the time. Because in these ways, women definitely should be protected. Now, when it comes to ideas and people arguing about things, that I understand. And I, I feel like there should always be debate. And I feel like First Amendment is a thing for a reason. Freedom of speech does exist in this country. And I don't think that that should be taken away from anybody, no matter how ridiculous your ideas are. But as far as what we're actually acting on, I think we need to start relying more on the level headed and stop going with the fringe. Because in a lot of cases, the fringe are going to steer us wrong. In a lot of cases, the activists that you're dealing with are people that are new to living their truth. And so that's why they're so gung ho about everything and so unwilling to compromise. Where when you come across a person like Blair White, Blair White is more willing to admit what she actually is, which is a trans woman. And she's very clear about that. So that makes people a lot easier to go with you because they're like, okay, maybe you're different. Maybe you're something I'm not familiar with, but at least I feel like you're being straight with me. No pun intended, but at least I feel like you're actually being genuine with me. I can speak with you. I can reason with you. So I really do feel like if we as a community rally more behind people like Blair White, when it comes to trans matters, that would be a more logical route because I really think if we're going to build these bridges between straight society, if I'm allowed to put it that way, and LGBT, I really do think that that's where a Blair White can come in handy and really navigate some of this because a lot of times what trans people complain about is feeling like they're not getting respect. Well, just to be 100% transparent, I'm friends with Blair White and we've hung out and she gets treated with respect by people that you would think are supposed to be hateful or transphobic. They don't treat her any differently than they treat any other woman. And that's what it seems like most trans people are looking for right now. And the way to get that is not by trying to force people. It's not by trying to legislate it. It's not by trying to jeopardize people's employment. It really does have to come from a place of common sense and respect. That's the only way that we're going to get to where we're going as LGBT people. And it really does affect the whole community. If you haven't seen the video I did on it, LGBT support in general is down right now. Even support for gay marriage is down right now. And that's because it looks like it's all of us that are involved with this craziness and it makes it so people don't want to support us. And that's really the way I feel about it. Let me know what you guys think down below in the comments. This has been Ty Rivera, the absolute best LGBTQ comedian in the world. <laughs>